Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another little Tai Chi class and Qigong, Tai Chi Qigong. Um, it's, it's kind of both, actually, because we're looking at uh, Master Joe Locke's Seven Stars, uh, Qigong, uh, Seven Stars Rotations Qigong, uh, which includes a whole martial section. So let's take right hand in fist, please. Left hand straight and pull back the thumb with feet together, hands together, and we press forwards, lovely. So let's open our stance. Luckily, the form really is a warm-up in itself and has includes a warm-up um, within it uh, and progresses up to uh, really quite full-on stuff. So we don't have to do anything else. We can just jump straight in. So let's float up, please, through the top of the head. Can you imagine that you're a puppet on a string and that one top point is gently extending you towards the sky? But at the same time, we want the chin to be slightly down and back and feel how that releases and opens the vertebrae of the neck. Let's allow the body to hang and release down from that center point and just take a few moments to listen and feel for the effects of gravity. You'll notice that you have an even drape. So rather like your body is a cloak hanging over a hanger, as you breathe and listen to your body, you'll just feel this general pull down towards the center of the earth. So we have yin and yang. We have the top of the head lengthening us up and we have gravity gently drawing us down. And the upshot of that is that we get lots of space within the system. You maybe even can feel the spine decompressing as we lengthen up and release down. Feel the weight flowing down through your structure, through the four corners of the feet and across the feet and spreading evenly down into the earth. Calm down. Listen behind you. If your mind wanders, that's okay. But when you realize it has happened, just acknowledge those thoughts that you had and gently let them go to bring your awareness back to the present, to here and now. This is a practice in itself. Be with it. Not anticipating the class ahead, but rather just be here now. Let the calm and quiet 
of this moment of listening and feeling and letting go be all that there is. Beautiful, well done. Let's now bring the awareness to all 10 fingers, gently lengthening them down. And feeling for the connection with each and every digit. Noticing any sensation. Maybe you'll feel a tingling at the tips of the fingers. And as you engage and feel and breathe into the fingers, you may start to feel them becoming plump. Full of energy. Let's bring the awareness gently back. To your surroundings and if your eyes are closed you can slowly and gently open your eyes. When you practice on your own that would be a bare minimum time. We really want to give Wuji lots of space, lots of time to do its thing. Up to half an hour would be good. For now, let's begin. Open door five. Breathe and calm. And movement two. Taiji duality. Remember to fill your back as you expand. Changing direction. Feel for the connection with the floor. Keeping the hips level. Turn palms, draw in, float up, and second level, 
We did earth, now we're doing sky or heaven. This exercise, I think you could do with eyes closed if you like, to feel for the energy circulating round. But you could do it with eyes open as well. Let's change direction. Swirl the chi around your arms and your upper back. Remember, keep those hips level, not moving the hips, moving in the waist. Nice and full, please. Feel a stretch around the bowl. Good. Movement three. Heaven, earth and man. We gather the chi to the forehead like a bowl. Draw into the corners of the eyebrows, down the face and neck, and open. Point to the body, connect energetically with the body at that level, but don't touch. Keep those knees in line with the feet, and up you come. Cover center. Good, check posture, and relaxed center. Listen to your heart rate, to your breath. Good, are we ready? Round two of movement three. Gather. Open. Very good. Check posture, relax to center. Ready. Movement three, a uh, third rep of movement three. Gather, feel the ball of energy, point to the eyebrow corners. Not touching, but connecting energetically down the nipple line, inside of legs. Do not let the knees bow out or in, please. Up you come, and Cover center. Lovely. Check posture. Relax to center. So we return to this process of listening, experiencing, and letting go. We're not just standing and waiting until the next movement. Check the top of the head is floating up. The chin is slightly down and back. Allow the body to release with gravity. But you will notice a difference now between this position and Wuji. By the hands resting gently against the belly, it directs the energy to pull into the center of the body. We call this area in the very center of the belly, the dandian, or the lower dandian. 
It's not where the hands touch, but the hands are directing the energy into the body. Can you feel the warmth or the temperature of your hands? It is flowing in. And the gentle pressure of the hands also directs your awareness and your energy in a couple of inches in behind your hands into the body. Breathe and feel into that flow of energy into the center. And this is called centering practice. Very useful for economizing and rebuilding energy levels. Very useful for centering, literally centering the body, the mind, the energy levels, the emotions. Let your mind focus in as if the energy is light and your hands are a lens, bringing your awareness to a single point in the very center of your belly. And just as if you were focusing the rays of the sun, it makes that point very powerful, very hot. Think of that point as a tiny little sun in the center of your belly. Good, let's release the hands gently down. And now we go into our heaven and earth rotation. For the beginning of movement four. You'll recognize this as the first movement in the Phoenix form. And as a standalone exercise, it's very useful for stomach and spleen function. It helps to cleanse the system. and open the way for more complex requests to the body. <laughs> Good. Notice there's a little rise and fall in a lot of Master Locke's work, which is unusual within the Tai Chi remit, but it's very nice. It has a kind of soothing quality of its own, like rocking a baby. But again, we're turning inside the hips. We're not turning the hips themselves. Excellent. Now we're going to turn to your right. Uh, so the right hand, sorry, to your left, to my right. I'm mirroring for you. Okay, so now we're looking at the four auspicious animals in the four directions. So we're to the southeast, to your southeast. South is in front of you, east is to your left. So we're going to roll a ball, one and two, roll up a level, one and two, roll up a level, one and two, flip the toes one at a time, skim across, level with the waist, turn palms under the arm, along the arm and turn palms. Good, we're gonna do that again, a little focus for the do and the run channels. So rolling at belly height, at chest height, at head height, we flip the toes, turn the palms, come under the arms, along the arms, make a circle, turn palms, and a little half step, relax down. Now, if you're already small, the half step is practically non-existent. You can go bigger. Let's now do the more 
uh, involved version of the dragon. So this time we're doing our little choo-choo train. I call it the choo-choo train move, but we're turning the waist, which drives the pistons <laughs> of the hands. And we're starting at the base of the spine and we walk up the ladder of the spine. So think of each vertebrae as a rung in the ladder. Breathe and gently roll your awareness up a level with each right left movement or left right movement. Feel your way. The vertebrae are relatively small. They start big at the bottom and they get smaller and smaller as you walk up. So relax and breathe and feel for each little bone. As you're very gently rocking left and right in the waist. Check posture, make sure the top of the head is lengthening up and the chin is slightly down and back. And as there are 33 vertebrae, you can do 33 circulations. But in my mind, it's more important that you're feeling and connecting with the spine rather than being absolutely bang on with each count. Ready, change direction. We flip the toes. We turn the palms, come underneath along the line of the arm and oh, tiger half step, relax it down. Very good. We're going to continue on now into our phoenix. So the right hand comes under and we expand, we stretch the ball and we rotate the ball and we step the back foot forwards, collapse the ball and expand. Lower hand coming up, upper hand down, turn, release. So if you're doing the Phoenix form already, you'll know this of old. This is your, again, sun uh, or heaven and earth rotations. Now we have sun and moon rotation. We float up, keep your structure, turn your center, come in, step back, float up. Here's your moon rotation, turn and come in and step to the side. Now we have the snake. So we flip the toes to your southeast again, and we turn it, turn the waist, bring left hand forwards and up, right hand down and back, fingers point round the body, look over the shoulder, push your hands away from your body, release, lasso the top hand and flip the toes. So front hand forwards and up, back hand down and back, look over your shoulder. So we're looking back over the shoulder to the corner, press the hands out, release. You can lasso again. Let's do that one again. Flip the toes and turn, press the hands away. Keep breathing, release, lasso. This is useful for all of your organs to look behind you. Press your hands away, release. And you can lasso or just come back to center Look how wide my stance is. I'm going to have a really fat, wide turtle. That's all right, let's do the turtle. We cross the hands and we open and set back. So the north is in two parts. We have a hybrid of snake and turtle. So hands in line with feet, fill the back. Gently stretch into your shell of the turtle. Lengthen up through the top of the head with the chin slightly down and back. Stretch your neck as if the turtle is poking its head out of its shell. Keep that chin down and back. You should feel the entire body engage and stretch and release. Good. And walk in. Ah, wow, that was powerful, wasn't it? The turtle really packs a punch and yet so simple. Isn't that lovely? Good, all right, so now we move on to the five elements. So we're going to turn a little bit to your, again, southeast and release your left hand and foot forwards. Okay, so first we have the element of gold. We're going to step on the heel, turn out and step through. 
grab the throat. We roll back towards the back foot, float up, release the front foot, square up. The hands are one in front of the other, step and grab the throat. That's your second side. So now we have the water element, block, step back and with palm turned up, spit out the fingers. Block, step back, spit out the fingers. Now with your left foot forwards, we're going to step, and I'm mirroring, so I'm not gonna get the benefits of this fully, but anyway, left leg forwards, we take a half step and do the choo-choo train, right hand coming forwards, release, take a full step forwards, and again, choo-choo train and stretch. Well done. Okay, now we move on to the fire element. So we turn the toes in, release the other foot and step to the southwest. As we block up with the right, the left hand comes in front of the chest. And as we press forwards, we take a half step. And in the form, that's all you need to do. One time for the fire element for the heart. So now we turn to face front and we scoop one, and two and come in and there's the earth element which is basically like uh, phoenix and graceful clouds of blessing it's that same cloud hands let's do part five a couple of times because so far we've done drill for it but we haven't actually done it like that before so we'll do it a couple of times more i'll do it again facing you so that you can see what's happening and then i'll do a back view and I'll kind of iron out the corners a bit so that you can see what's happening more. Okay, so ready? So you have just done your turtle and close and we're going to turn and release. So we're going to step, turn out, step through, roll back, lift, square up, step, step through, block, step back, I call this white snake spits out its tongue, fingers point forwards, block, step back, spit out its tongue. S uh, come in with your right foot, stretch, one hand forward, one hand back, release, step, choo-choo train, and in. Onto the fire element, we turn in, we step and block, and rise as we press, Good, and finish, step and scoop, and scoop and come in. Very good, okay. So I'll show you the back view this time. And as I say, I'm ironing out the corners. I'm gonna try, it's difficult for me because I'm ingrained 45 degrees, but actually Master Lock gives us 20 degrees leeway anyway. So we can go to 45 or we can go a bit wider. What would that one have? 65 degrees, if you want to, you can go quite, quite wide to the corners. You have to be able to adapt what you're doing to suit the space you're in. So if you don't have a deep space, but it's long, <laughs> you can go to the side as well. So anyway, we have turned, let's see, to your south east, to your left. Yeah, so again, I have to iron it out and make sure you can see. Okay, so you should be going to your corner. I'm a bit more to the side, really. Ready? So we step and through. Roll back, float up, square up, step and through. Block, step back, pierce the fingers through. Block step back, pierce the fingers through, half step, stretch, and step, stretch, turn in, block in front of the heart, press forwards, that's your, it's like Jade Maiden plays shuttles really with a half step, and we step to the side and scoop, and come in. Excellent, so let's do that one more time. Yeah, maybe a couple more times, <laughs> get the feeling of it. Okay, ready? So we have 
step and through. Lu, G, and through. Uh, sorry, and from there, block, step back and pierce. Fix the front foot. You want to turn the toes in to be in line with your hand or even slightly further in. Uh, so the feet are parallel, block, step back, fix the front foot. Wood element, half step, stretch, and step, half step, stretch, turn, block, half step, step to the front, scoop, and in. Good. Now let's do it and I'll stop talking and see if you can just follow with me and I'll try and do it clearly. <laughs> Ready? Did we get it? Let's do it again. That's the beauty of Tai Chi, you know? It's like a mantra, a physical mantra. You just keep repeating it, keep doing it again and again. So if the first hundred times aren't great, don't worry. By the time you get to a thousand, it'll be slick as anything. <laughs> Ready? So from here, Yeah? Is the back view useful? Yes, good. Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. Ready? Beautiful, well done. Let's do it one more time. I think the elements is a really nice little section. This is the martial section. So in this section, you can see the blocks, the grabbing of the throats, the rollbacks, the presses, the, you know, the, this is a block grab as well. Block grab, blocks and strikes. It's all very martial. Tai Chi, if you remember, the full name is Tai Chi Chuan. Chuan means fist. So Tai Chi is innately martial. That's its nature. Um, but it's also really good for us. It's also really good for our health because it's designed to position us in our most powerful stances, that our function of our body is at its optimal. So every 
Tai Chi movement is pure Qigong. It's just Qigong designed to be used as a weapon <laughs> or as a defensive weapon, you could say. Um, so, so this is the martial element. It doesn't mean that you have to start using it as such. Um, so hence we call this a Qigong form. But actually, even though uh, Master Lok made the phoenix as a Qigong form, a Tai Chi Qigong form, it is still innately martial. Uh, and within the same breath, when he was showing us the, the, the phoenix, um, he was saying, OK, so this is Qigong, so it's for health. And martial means for, you know, Chuan means for martial arts. Tai Chi means for martial arts. But he was showing us martial applications uh, of the phoenix. So you can see there's a kind of contradiction there. It's kind of like hand in glove. You cannot take the martial fully out of, of Tai Chi based Qigong um, because that's its nature. It can be used uh, to defend, but uh, it doesn't mean that that has to be our focus. My focus is fully on health. But if the positioning is right, if you have the measurements correct from the martial perspective, the angles, the measurements, the position, the quality that we want in the martial arts, soft and buoyant, it gives you the health benefits. So you really can't separate them. You can do pure Qigong that does not contain a martial element. Uh, and that's, yeah, then you call it Qigong. Um, but even then, it's still strengthening your system, which can then feed into the martial aspect as well. OK, you can see probably by looking at me, I'm not a warrior. <laughs> not 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 an actual fisticuffs warrior, but, you know, we're we're warriors in other ways. We're fighting the good fight for our health. OK, ready? One more time. And. Good, and relax. So that's part five. And within part five, as in with all Tai Chi, we want to be aware of the six harmonies. But number six is actually called the six harmonies and is focusing on it. Uh, but even in number five there, I felt, you know, my, I was doing a half step and I was tempted to go big with the arms, but that would break the rule of the three harmonies and the six harmonies. So if your stance is small, you can see from the side, if your stance is small, we need to contain the upper body as well as the lower body. Can you see that's out of balance? That's in balance. That's in balance, but that's not. Can you see the difference? If my stance is small, my arms also have to be small. And I think I did break the three harmonies a little bit there in, in our last actual effort because I'm so used to extending in a full Jade Maiden position. This is the full position. But if I'm taking the half step to allow myself to rise, I have to bring my arms back in because this has to harmonize with this. Can you play with it for me now, with me? So take a big stance, stance and do your Jade Maiden position. Nice and strong and straight. Now leave your arms where they are so you can do it wrong and take a half step. Can you feel that your arms are overly exerting themselves and you're knocking yourself out of balance? Now soften your arms to bring them in so you're still stretching through them, 
Smaller stance does not mean collapsed. There's no less energy in the hands, but it's more contained. Can you feel the difference? That's more powerful, that's more balanced. Good, relax down. Good, so be mindful. If you take a big stance, you need big arms to go with it. You need the harmony of upper and lower body. If you take a small stance, you must then adapt your arms and not just go, well, I've always gone big, so I'm going big. Doesn't work. <laughs> so look at the turtle that we did earlier. I was big in my stance. I went, oh, right. So if I had done a slender arm, that's wrong. You can see that doesn't work. It's kind of triangular and it felt tight in my chest. So if my feet are big, I have to mirror that. I have to mimic that with my hands. And you can see very clearly, hopefully, hands above feet, elbows above knees, shoulders above hips. So this doesn't work. Neither would this work. Well, that's a different move. Yeah, but it has to be, it has to balance upper and lower levels. So be mindful of that. Uh, all right, so let's move on now to movement six. Ah, I said we're doing movement seven today. Yeah, we can do that, but we'll need to, to hurry up <laughs> and do movement six. We're going to look at the whole of movement six. Just watch me first, please. Uh, I'm still working on the walking part of movement six, but anyway, the, the second section. So if you watch me, we've just done, yes, yeah, so we've just done our scoop and scoop. So we return into proud hands for the beginning of movement six. Just watch three and four. And now we swing the baby, step through and open. And we go back the way we came. Step, swing, turn, step and open. And keep coming around the front to go into our Marshall flowers that I am still working on. <laughs> Good, okay. So that's movement six, the three internal, sorry, the three internal harmonies and the three external harmonies. The external harmonies is what we just talked about, hands, feet, elbows, knees, shoulders, hips. So everything above works. <laughs> they, <laughs> Do you see what I mean? It's it's like you've folded a piece of paper and cut a shape and then opened up. So the two parts should be like a clamshell. They should work together. The internal harmonies are the mind guiding the chi, the life force, the chi producing the strength. Mind, energy, strength. They go together. So if your mind wanders, that's where your energy has gone. That's where your strength has gone. If your mind is focused, listening for the external harmonies, that's where your strength will be. So let's try it together. We have come in and we step. We do four scoops, one, two, three and four. Now we swing. Step through and open left. Keep the shoulders down. Turn back in. Arms come up. We step along the line and swing. Turn. Step through and open. Keep turning that way. Step through. Left across. Circle the arms. Right across, circle the arms. Let's step left, come across and step back. Turn, come across, step left, come across, step back and back to center. Well done, <sighs> good. Now, again, we have to adapt the form to suit the space. So we could do weave and weave 
and weave and weave and step back and step back. I think we did that actually at one stage. We were doing our martial flowers with walking. So you could practice that. But if you don't have space, you can adapt it. You can do one step. You can do no steps. You don't have to step at all. But notice if you are stepping, your arm comes across the front leg. Yeah. OK, so let's do movement six again. You can leave out the steps if you want, because I want to get into movement seven. We don't have much time, so we're glossing over movement six today to do that. So let's have one more go. Ready? And step. Lift the toe, swing the baby, step through and open. Keep the shoulders down. Turn back the way you came, up and over. Step back, swing up, turning the right toe, step left foot through, open the right side and turn to the front. Yeah, rest. <laughs> That's, it's difficult to, to, to teach anyway, even, you know, all things being equal in a room together. But when you're turning away from the screen, it can be a bit confusing. Just do the leg work with me. I did want to jump ahead to movement seven, but I can see struggling a wee bit with this. And I'd rather quality rather than quantity. So let's have a look at the leg work, please. You can just use your arms to balance. Don't worry about your arms. You're in your open stance and you're going turn lift, turn lift, turn lift, turn lift. Lift your left toes, turn on the heel. Now you're stepping straight forwards with your back foot, turning on the front foot and finish facing the back. Now just open your left toes a little bit. So it's a sort of continuation of the turn, yeah? Now we go back the way we came. So we turn the left toes in and go in as far as you can. Shift your weight back and step your right foot directly back, weight back. Turn the left toes in, keep turning, shift your weight left and lift your right toes. Keep turning and step directly forwards, but finish facing the back and open your right toes a little bit. Good, and finish, lift the toes and turn. And we can face the front. Or actually, you don't even have to turn as much because we're going to go to the diagonal next. But let's do that again, ready? So we have our little bob to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. Lift the left toes, turning on the heel, step through to face the back, open the left toes a bit more. Turn the left toes in, take your weight left, step back with your right foot, turn in. Shift your weight, turn out the right, step through to face the back and open the right. Keep going in this direction now. Turning on the right heel, step through left. Very good. It's actually a load of nothing. Just watch me do it and you'll see how simple it is. You might have to watch the video a few times, but you'll get the idea. Just watch. Ready? So we go one, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, Turn, step, open. Back the way you came, turn in, step, turn in, turn out, step, open. Keep turning that way and there you are. Yeah, let's try it again. Okay, ready? Just using your hands for balance, don't worry about and the swing the baby because you've got that ready and so we go left right left right lift your left toes turn step through to face the back and open back the way you came turn in step directly back turn in turn out step through open 
Keep turning in that direction to face the front. Good. So sometimes it's better to practice an element and get it to the point that you don't have to think about it. It becomes simple very fast. It becomes easy to the point you'll think, why was I struggling with that? But it's just familiarity. So let's go one more time. Ready? So we have to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. Lift the left toes, step through, face the back, open left. Back the way you came, left closes, step back, turn to the front. Keep turning, right toes out, step through to face the back, turn out right, keep turning and step. Good, well done. So you'll notice that once you face the back, you just keep turning in that direction to release the foot to open and then you go back the way you came. So it's basically face the front, face the front, face the front, face the front, step through, face the back, open, go back the way you came and do it on the other side. Right? <laughs> Let's add the arms. We'll just focus on that. I'd rather, as I say, get this, that you're happy, and go, okay, that we don't have that, but let's do this. No, I don't like that. Let's try again, ready? So we're from here. And one, two, three, four. Here we go. We lift the left toe, swing up and over the head, open to the left. Good. Now I bring the left side in, arm up, step back and swing under, turning to the right, step the back foot through and open. Good, keep turning to face the front. I think, I think you've got it. Do you think you've got it? Yes, good, okay, lovely. So let's just finish with a bit of our martial flowers again to finish. Again, I'd rather you got the quality of the movement um, so you practice that and then we can combine the full movements. So we're using the back of the hand. You see this? It's the back of the hand that leads. I'm not coming across with my hand palm leading. It's the back of the palm leads and comes up, back of the palm, front of the palm, follows. And then as I turn my waist, the arm turns, so it's back of the palm again. So back of palm, front of palm, back of palm, back of palm, front of palm, back of palm. Now you could stand in water and slap the water. It would hurt. <laughs> it's a very Shaolin way of, of doing this exercise. And they would do it with buckets of beans, as in hard, dry beans and peas, and ball bearings, and sand, <laughs> and that you're smacking, 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 smacking. You can see you could do it very violently if you wanted to. So again, this is pure martial arts, but we're doing it air, air martial arts. We're airbenders, if you like, avatar. We're just swirling. Good. And I want you to feel a connection between the two arms. So it is rather like you're turning a steering wheel. Good. Keep it a little bit, uh, what's the word, contained. So again, we're still, this is the harmonies. So if your stance is small, your arms should not be massive. If you're in a big, deep stance, then you go big with your arms. You see the difference? But in the small stance, keep it contained. Yes, that's it. Relax and breathe. Very good. It's coming nicely. And this is... Um, this is often used in double broadsword and in spear. I'm just wondering, do I have a spear handy? 
Keep going, please. I'll see. I do. I don't want to wreck the place, but here is a spear. <laughs> really only for big areas. But you can see how without breaking the place, you're crossing and circling and crossing and circling. See how the movement works? Yeah, and no, I'm not, I haven't done spear in a long time. This is just sat there to remind me, oh yeah, you need to go back to spear. But you see what I mean? So it can be used as such. I could pop that down now. Very good. Anyway, that's your homework. Have a play with martial flowers. Think of keeping it contained. Well done. Yeah, and rest. Take a breath. Good. Uh, maybe on WhatsApp, on, on our group, I will uh, share with you some footage of someone doing martial flowers with various weapons so that you can see what this could lead into. But for now, let's do a little heel tap, please. Allow your body to be nice and loose and relaxed. If you had time, and why not make time? You could do another full half hour of Wuji standing and just listen, feel, and let go and notice the huge difference between Wuji before your Tai Chi and Wuji after your Tai Chi, because we have facilitated energetic flow. And boy, it makes a difference. And your Wuji helps to amplify all of those benefits. So the more you do, the better you feel. Let's bring the energy to center now, please. Hug the elbows in, calming down into the belly. Breathing into the belly. Focusing the awareness the temperature of your hands to a center point in the belly. The Dandian. And feel your energy is stronger. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. Relax your arms gently down. Let's take right hand in fist, left hand straight together, and we press forwards. Good stuff, folks. Well done. Keep practicing, keep enjoying, and I look forward to seeing you next time.